Hey guys, what's going on? Bringing you another circuits video here. Uh, this time around we're going to talk about Thevenin and Norton's equivalence. So this is just another tool in your circuits toolbox that you can have to break down circuits um, and manipulate them in a way that is, is advantageous to you. So I'm going to start this off with a little motivation pitch. So why is this even important uh, as far as electrical engineering is concerned? Well, think about when you plug something into the wall. Uh, all you really care about is, is it 120 volts? Uh, if it is, cool. And how many you know amps can it source? And if it has some impedance associated with it or resistance, what is that value? Uh, you don't care if there's multiple parallel and series sets of resistors and different passive elements in the circuit behind the wall. All you care about is what that open circuit looks like to you before you interface with it, before you plug something in. So um, that's what Thevenin and Norton's equivalence is typically used for. So if I draw you um, a diagram of Thevenin's equivalence, VTH is my voltage source and then I have a series resistor or impedance. Um, RTH is what we're going to call it. So this is Thevenin's uh, equivalent here. You just simply have a voltage source and then a resistor in series. And this is my A and this is my B port. So as you could have guessed, we're going to turn this entire circuit on the left into just this right here. We're going to break it down to that. Um, the other uh, strategy of showing a equivalent circuit is using Norton's method or Norton's equivalence, which is nothing more than a current we're going to call it ISC that'll make much more sense in a second why we call it that and then we're going to have a parallel resistor interestingly enough it's also Thevenin's resistance even though this is the Norton equivalent we're going to it's the same exact value so we're going to call it RTH and we still have our A and our B ports so this is Thevenin's and this is Norton's so the three steps to solving Thevenin's and Norton's equivalents is pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to write them down here so we can track them as we go. So we're going to find VTH or the open circuit voltage. So find VTH. Uh, where VTH is on ours is the open circuit voltage which is going to be this plus and minus here which if you look at it a little more closely it's the same as this right here so VTH and if you keep analyzing you'll see that this whole node on top is actually the same voltage VTH uh, so step two is going to be to close the open circuit with a short circuit and find what's called ISC, the short circuit current. Step three is going to be solve for Thevenin's resistance, uh, which is simply going to be nothing more than my Thevenin's voltage over my short circuit current. Seems pretty easy, right? Well, uh, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So, uh, we already started on the circuit up top labeling our VTH so the next thing we're going to do is just simply use nodal analysis to find what VTH is so uh, I have some other videos if you guys haven't seen them yet that outline how to use nodal analysis and also mesh current and also uh, KVL and KCL so these these other videos kinda lead up to this video so if, if you have some time and you want to check them out uh, go ahead so starting off with nodal analysis we're going to get VTH minus 25 over the 5 ohm resistor we're going to add that to VTH over the 20 ohm resistor uh, we have the current coming in the opposite direction for the current source so that's going to be minus 3 uh, as you'll catch on I, I really have a habit of uh, doing my nodal analysis where I sum the currents going away from the node uh, it's just personal preference um, it's just what I've gotten used to. So, okay, yeah, so now we got a equation, one equation, one unknown, and we can just simply solve it. 
So doing some algebraic gymnastics here, VTH over 5. Um, this is going to pop out a 5 plus VTH over 20 minus 3 is equal to 0. So if I want this to be rationalized with the denominator equal to 20, I have to multiply top and bottom by 4. So I'm going to get 4 VTH plus 1 VTH over 20. So it's going to be 5 VTH over 20. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring my 5 and my 3 to the other side. Um, so this will actually reduce down to, if I divide the top and bottom by 5, I'm actually going to get VTH over 4, which allows me to solve directly for VTH, which is going to be equal to 32 volts. Pretty easy, right? So let me just label this 32 volts. That's my Thevenin's voltage. So um, the next thing we're going to do, step two, so let me go ahead and cross this off. We found VTH. Now we need to find the short circuit current. So um, whenever we look at our circuit, we have our open circuit, which is represented by A and B. What we have to do to find the short circuit current is, as you could have guessed, we have to short the circuit, short it out, um, and then find this current here. We're going to call it ISC. So um, you may be thinking we can just simply take a shortcut and say, is ISC going to be equal to VTH over 4? Um, it is going to be this voltage over 4 but it's not the VTH we previously solved for. So I should probably erase that and call that something different now because it's no longer VTH. Uh, since we've completely changed the circuit, uh, we now have current leaving this node, which means that these other currents on this side of the circuit are now going to be different because now we actually have more current leaving on one side as opposed to the other as it was before. So I'm just going to call this uh, arbitrarily V1 just so we don't get things mixed up. Okay, cool. So crunching the numbers again, I'm just going to perform nodal analysis all over again to find my ISC. Uh, so now I can just jot down my ISC is going to be equal to my new V1 over 4. So V1 minus 25 over my 5 ohm resistor added with my current leaving this branch V1 over 20. Subtract my 3 ohm or sorry my 3 amp current coming in because it's coming the negative uh, the negative way negative passive sign convention uh, and then I'm just going to add that to my new uh, loop in the circuit which is going to be the current ISC or V1 over 4. Now I chose to represent it as V1 over 4 because I only have one equation and I want to keep one unknown. I could have simply put ISC in here but to me that would have just been a little more messy. Uh, I just like to keep it all the same variable. Okay so uh, reducing it down, V1 over 5 uh, pops a 5 out, as we saw before, plus V1 over 20 uh, minus 3 plus V1 over 4. So I'm just going to do some quick math here. This 5 and the 3 are going to again go to the right hand side. It's going to be equal to 8. Uh, then I'm going to collapse these fractional V1 terms down. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a 20, multiply top and bottom by 4 to get there. Same thing here, turn this in 20, top and bottom have to be multiplied by 5 in order to get that to work. Uh, so now I'm going to add all my V1 terms. So I'm going to have all my V1 terms over 20. So 4 plus 1 plus 5 is going to give me 10 V1 over 20. That interesting, interestingly enough looks like 1 half. So this is going to become B, V1 over 2. V1 is now simply solved to be 16 volts. Now I don't really care about V1 because I was just using it to find ISC. So now we can solve for ISC, which is going to be 16 over 4 
which is 4 amps. So now we just found our Norton's current or our short circuit current. It's kind of a slang term that people call it um, because of what you have to do to get it. You have to close the circuit. Um, okay, so now we've solved for VTH, ISC, and all we have left is RTH, right? Well, simply enough, step three. Step three is going to be just simple division. So it, it honestly couldn't be easier. Uh, so RTH is going to be uh, 32 divided by 4, which is 8. So RTH is equal to 8 ohms here and here. So that's about all there is to it. Um, whenever you get a circuit and you, you're curious about how it looks like to the outside world, just make sure you pop it through a Thevenin's and Norton's equivalence problem and you can see exactly what this circuit looks like to the outside world. So uh, make sure you like and subscribe down below and if you have any comments or questions on this video uh, go ahead and just leave me a comment or if you have any feedback if you'd like to see other kinds of circuits worked uh, to make things more clear just let me know. I'd love to help out. Thanks guys.